Hey, Pat McCardle here with my buddy Chris, back for another episode of Shop Talk, where today it's all about Ranger. So Chris, what are we jumping into today? Well, Pat, this is an exciting episode. Today we are just gonna talk about all the new stuff on the 2025 full-size Ranger lineup. So Chris, I noticed we got, you know, a Model Year 24 and a Model Year 25, and looking at the front end of these vehicles, they actually do look a little bit different. Can yep. you kind of take us through some of the aesthetic changes that have come this year? Yeah, so we redesigned the front end of the XP1000 for model year 25, really focused on making it look a little bit tougher and meaner and basically how you guys told us you want your Ranger to look. So you guys can tell that the front end body panels are all redesigned, the grille is redesigned, um, also an all new bumper for model year 25. Now, these things aren't just for looks, right? There's also some functionality yep, here. So yep. I always think on grills, Right, it's gotta be easy to remove so I can wash that radiator out. And this one, obviously super simple to get in and out of there. Now coming down on the bumper, it's not just a new look, right? There's some functionality that's a little different too. Yep, so this isn't just a new pretty face for the Ranger. Um, this is a new, tougher, more capable vehicle. Uh, so Pat, you mentioned the bumper. We think it looks really cool, mm -hmm. uh, but it's also physically larger and stronger than the previous generation bumper. It's also got some of that same accessory integration that we've had on previous models, like integrated winch mounting, plow mounting. We also added mounts for new accessory lights within yep. the bumper. Um, so it looks really cool. Yeah. Also added functionality and protection for this year. Yeah, and now it's not just uh, accessory integration. The winch actually comes with this unit now, right? Yep. On, the, yep. on the Ranger XP1000. And there's some cool features that I really like. I happen to have this uh, handy remote in my pocket. I might have to turn it back on here. Um, but you can actually operate this winch remotely by just uh, the push of a button. Um, and it will uh, eventually start to move. You're pressing the in button. Oh, that would help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you so got like me there. Pat better, mentioned. Better hit the out button if I want it to come out. Yep. We no. can't fix operator error, unfortunately. No, no, can't. I'll just look like an idiot on this one. That's yeah. fine. But as Pat mentioned, one thing that's cool with the Polaris winches is we do have synthetic rope included on ours. Yeah. We've got an auto stop magnetic fair lead, so this winch will stop itself. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, press the right that's, that's really the reason why I did nothing when I hit the in button, right? Because when you hit that, it's going to go in and stop right where it needs to and not pull tension too hard to damage that fair lead or bumper at all. Yep. So I think other cool things, right? You got the, uh, the nice orange strap so you can hang on to that. You know, obviously make sure you got gloves and uh, glasses on. Uh, and a new hook as well, along with a new, new styled fair lead, right? So there's actually a lot that's going on between the strap, the hook, you know, the fair lead here, you got this nice synthetic rope. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that rusting over time. It's also doesn't hold the tension of a steel cable. So if you ever do fracture one, it just falls to the ground. It doesn't get that whiplash like a steel cable might have. Uh, and it's generally pretty uniform over time. So even if you get a little dirty, it's easy to string it out, wash it off and put it back in. You don't have to worry about all that debris building up or, or rusting that cable like you do with a steel one. Yeah. Yeah. So super nice to have that built in. I know I use a winch all the time on a Ranger, whether I'm plowing in the wintertime or, you know, running, you know, tearing trees down or, you know, running chainsaw. It comes in, comes in handy all the time. Yeah. I know it's about to be winch season in my neck of the woods this spring. <laughs> my favorite feature of the synthetic rope is just that it floats because I get myself stuck in mud and it's really <laughs> nice when you can see that blue rope floating on the top versus yeah. sticking your hand down in a mud pile trying to find the rope. For sure. So now coming back from the front end a little bit, I noticed tire size is different on these two vehicles as well, right? So we got 27 inch tires on the model year 24 and those go up to what size on the new one now? These are now 29 inch tires on every XP1000 model. So they are gonna lift the vehicle up, make it look a little bit tougher, um, but they've also got the benefit of an added inch of ground, ground clearance. Nice. So this is a, a top upgrade that we see customers doing. And so for this year, we're Bring giving it. it to people from the factory. Awesome. So the other one I noticed here is uh, obviously no sunshade here, right? Roof doesn't come on the 24, but the 25's got one on it. Is that, that's a factory install now, yeah? Correct, yep. So we're gonna add winches and a roof along with 29 inch tires to every XP1000 model. Nice. Model year 25. Now the other one that's gotten me for many years is on these nets, right? That you got this spot down at the bottom that you got to always, you know, kind of falls out. You got to clip it in first before you get it over. I believe that one got updated as well for this year, right? Yep, we've experienced this same thing internally. We've also heard from you guys, the customers, that there were a couple improvements that we could make to the nets. So we redesigned them just to be really simple. So they're one hand operation now, when they're down, they'll fall, they won't touch the ground. Um, and they're really simple, just with one hand to re-engage. So 
you don't have that latch rod that you've got to get installed anymore. It just makes the doors easier to use. Nice. All right, well, I think it's time to jump into this thing so we can talk yep. about some of the, the driving features that maybe people won't be able to see. Uh, so we can talk about some of the interior bits on here, right? Yep, so it's not just a facelift for this year. We also made some improvements under the skin. Uh, Pat, why don't you tell folks about it? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the, the first one uh, that comes to mind here, I don't know if you can see down to this key switch, um, but if this thing's in park, you got your foot on the brake, all you gotta do is tap this over and it'll crank as long as it needs to to start this engine. So we'll show you that quick here. So you don't have to hold that key, you know, as long as it cranks. So, you know, over time makes it really easy and super consistent. You just turn that thing on, hold it for a, you know, a second or so, and it'll crank till it fires up. Um, the other nice thing as well is the power steering on this unit has been upgraded massively. So beauty of this steering, we've got upgraded assist. So literally a pinky finger is all you need, even when you're not moving. Um, it is way easier to operate this steering. And when you get toward the locks, it actually slows you down so you don't jam into that steering stop. It's also got some cool features where when you come out of a corner, it'll actually help center correct you so that you're driving straight again down the trail. Um, and whether you're in, you know, turf mode, two wheel drive, all wheel drive, going forward, reverse, low or high, the slow speed drivability and assist on this is awesome. So whether I'm going forward or reverse, it's still this super easy operation uh, and it's really consistent among speeds. So we do still derate the assist as you go faster to make it so it feels normal, kind of what you're used to in most vehicles. Uh, but overall, I can't tell you enough, this power steering is phenomenal. Like one of my favorite yep. features on these new Rangers for sure. Yeah, shout out to Bill in Wyoming on our engineering team. He spent a long time calibrating this new power steering. And for those of you guys that have some experience driving a Ranger XP1000, you're gonna notice a big difference. Yeah, so Chris, I think the other thing I heard about on these is that we've actually got a new uh, engine controller for this year, right? So the uh, drive modes, the work, the standard and performance, those change a little bit, right? Yep, so the same three drive modes that we've had on previous generations, but as we recalibrated this year, uh, we've got a little bit broader difference in those drive modes. So performance is gonna be just a little bit punchier, work is gonna be even smoother. Uh, but same, same three drive modes that we've had in prior generations. All right, so the other one that I think I can see that you guys might have to come around here a little bit is we've actually got some new storage on this dash as well. So you can see this nice new grill to be able to hold things that you might drop right in. There's a new rubber area here. If you want to drop a water bottle or other drink right between your legs, you got a nice easy access there. It'll hold it in a little bit more. Uh, and plenty of space down in the lower dash along with the glove box and upper storage. So lots of spots to put, you know, different drinks, different things that you might want easy access to. All right, guys. So it would not be an episode of Shop Talk without some cutaways up here and a bunch of complicated parts that I don't quite understand for Pat to explain to you guys. The transmissions are new from Model Year 25, and we used a lot of feedback from you guys to improve that design, to make the shifting feel more consistent um, across vehicles and um, through the life of your vehicle. Nice, all right, well I think bring that camera in. The first thing we wanna start out with is the location of these shift levers. So we've actually extended the distance up to, for these demonstrators, but these are both in the same gear. They're both shifted basically all the way into high right now. And you can see on the new one that it's a little more vertical, whereas the older version is, is tucked a little bit back. The reason for that is that when you're in neutral, uh, the shift cable actually basically runs down this way on the vehicle. Uh, on the Ranger, and when it's when we adjust this angle forward a little more, uh, it actually makes it so that the the force going either to you know low or reverse is basically the same arc instead of having to go kind of further one way versus the other. So that's the first thing that you'll notice from the outside. Um, as we get up into the shift sector, there's also some changes we'll get into in a minute, but I want to focus you guys down kind of on this uh, set of parts uh, that we've got on the bench here, and I'll maybe slide a couple things out of the way and really talk to you about how the heck this thing actually works and what's going on. So if you look at where that shift lever was, it attaches to this little guy right here and it's got a park pole or a, a pole for shifting that indexes into this, uh, this star gear here. Um, there's also a gear set here that keeps those two engaged, but this is really the thing that goes from position to position to position to get you into each of the gears. Now what that does is it rotates this shaft and you can see there's three grooves that are actually machined in here. One for each of the shift forks and one for the collar. Um, and you can see on some of these, there's actually wider spots. It's not uniform all the way down each one of these. And what that actually does then is it slots these uh, shift forks back and forth, depending on what gear you're trying to get into. Those then engage the shift dog here, which you can see these uh, parts of this gear actually have to slot into these. 
And that is gonna engage this gear set to drive um, you know, a particular gear. And these things both have to kind of move in unison or be free to select different gears on this shaft depending on whether you want high, low, or reverse uh, or park. Now, one of the issues that people run into is that they'll shift kind of halfway on the lever and they'll actually get where these are top to top uh, on, on the shift fork, or sorry, the shift dog uh, versus the uh, actual gear. And when that happens, this shaft will rotate and it'll kind of skip and you'll actually hear that you get kind of a, a ticking sound uh, out of your transmission, almost like that, but maybe a little bit louder, um, until these things actually drop in and then you're fully engaged in gear. So if we switch over to the new design, um, you can see a lot of the bits here are very similar in concept, right? We still have a, uh, you know, a, an input shaft for the shifter to connect to. We've still got that detent star. Now some improvements were made here. Um, you can see there's actually a couple bearings uh, on either side of this first shaft, uh, as well as the second one. There's a bearing here and a bushing on the other end. So both of these are gonna be able to rotate a little bit more freely. The other thing you notice is that there's no groove in the middle, so that, that collar has actually been removed. These shift forks have actually been widened, and you'll also see that there's no springs in here. The other thing is on these machine shafts, you see they're uniform in their thickness, so that removes some of the slop in that handle, uh, depending on where you are in that shift throw. Now these shift forks come down, you'll also see that these, uh, these dogs actually are split. There's a wavy washer between them now, so that instead of worrying about like going top to top, these things will drop right in, even if they're not you know, perfectly attached, and then they can kind of slide over. The other thing you see here is that this spline interface is much larger and chunkier, so less friction on that shift dog to be able to slide back and forth. So you get all things going into this that give you that buttery smooth shift effort. You're gonna nail the gear you're looking for every time. So overall, huge upgrades to the top end of this Model Year 25 transmission. And I mean, driving between this and the power steering, you notice them right away. Oh yeah. All right guys, we just showed you all the big updates on the Model Year 25 Rangers. Pat also showed you how a transmission works and how we made it better. Now we've wheeled in this XP1000 Northstar Ultimate to show you just a few more things that are new on the Model Year 25 Ranger lineup. Yeah, so Chris, I think looking at the front end, everything here looks exactly the same to me as what we just talked about, other than maybe we got an accessory uh, upper bumper on this one. Yep, we wanted to add this to show it to you guys, but redesigned the upper front brush guard just to complement that new style um, with the bumper. Nice, but still new hood, bodywork, camo, grill, bumper, you know, winch, you know, plow integration, all that stuff. Exactly the same on this North Star crew, right? Yep. Moving around to tires, also 29s here. Yep, so this model has always come with 29 inch tires, but this year we're gonna add 29 inch tires to every XP1000 model. So that's the uncabbed vehicles as well as the North Star Premium and the North Star Ultimate. All right, now one of the other cool things on this crew particularly, I think there's some roof upgrades that, you know, if you guys get the camera on your side, you can probably see, right? Yeah, we wanted to show you guys on a six seat crew vehicle, but we have redesigned the roof for model year 25. So for those of you that own a Ranger today, you'll notice that the shingling of the roof is the opposite of what it's been in prior model years. Um, this helps us to get a better seal as well as helps water flow off the roof better. We also added some more fasteners up top that Eric just zoomed in on uh, to show you guys how we've made that seam a little bit more robust and seal a little bit better. But now this is what we're really excited about with Model Year 25. Check out these new speakers. That's maybe enough of that for one episode, huh? <laughs> but yeah, new audio, right? Um, you know, all the other interior bits we talked about, you know, same upgrades here as well. Obviously we got the, uh, the camo version here, but there's a, how many other colors available this year? We got camo plus three colors. Nice, and now did I also hear that the uh, Texas edition's coming back? Yep, the Texas edition is coming back for this year. The same great features. We've also added a new Crew North Star Texas edition that really s steps up the game in terms of premium Texas edition vehicles. Nice, now I think I, I also might have heard that you got your wish and your favorite model's coming back, is that right? My absolute favorite. So guys, we're bringing back the Waterfowl edition for model year 25. I'm super excited to bring that one back. I know a lot of you guys that we got emails from are excited as well. Uh, that's a waterfowl hunting specific vehicle with a dedicated camo pattern, arched A-arms, 29 inch mud XC tires for that waterfowl hunting terrain. 
uh, I'm super excited to get out and hunt him in a little bit this year. Nice. All right, so Chris, we got the Ranger 1000 in the shop now, and there's uh, a few similarities and a couple things that are maybe slightly different, right? Yep, so you won't notice quite as much on the skin of this vehicle, but Pat will show you that we've made the same under the skin improvements. A couple of small tweaks for the Ranger 1000 this year. Yeah, bling bling, got the new Polaris logo, new updated branding on the vehicle, just to really refresh in the look. Um, but from a functionality standpoint, you guys would be excited that we've got the same updates on the Ranger 1000 premium as we've got on the XP 1000. So this winch comes from the factory, so does the roof. Now we've got a windshield and a rear panel mounted on this. Those are still accessories, um, but we are still offering some of those really important core things from the factory. The other thing we wanted to show you is the new nets that we designed for the XP 1000 also work on the Ranger 1000. Wanted to show you guys what the crew or the rear seat nets look like. Um, so again, really simple, but, but functional updates for this year. Yeah, then I think when you look at the inside, right, we got these upgraded nets, the storage that we talked about earlier, um, but the two favorite things from my side, this buttery smooth shifting, easy in any gear, uh, and the steering, you really can't beat it. I mean, one finger floating around, easy peasy lemon squeezy on this one, you're gonna love it. Hey, that's it for this episode of Shop Talk. Be sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, let us know what you wanna see next time.